Hey, what's up everybody? It's been a long time. Today's gonna be a little different. We are looking to get chickens. I am headed to the Home Depot to pick up some material for the chicken coop. But I want to give you an update on the truck. I'm driving it right now. We're going to go pick up a load of goodies and it's running great. Everything is doing fantastic. Been no problems whatsoever. Give you some quick drive time of this. And um, all of you that have commented on the videos, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for the feedback. Appreciate y'all saying that the videos were great. Y'all are enjoying them. And also that the content has been very good. It is, uh, means, means a lot, especially since I'm very new to this. Man, if y'all haven't done these upgrades yet, you guys are missing out. It's, um, it's phenomenal, y'all. It's, it's, uh, it's great. I cannot, I cannot be happier with what we've done with the truck and cannot wait to do further stuff to it. The intercooler is going to be the next thing that is going to be on our purchase list. It's just, they have not dropped it yet. Whenever they do, you already know. Whenever that happens, it's going to be install time. I don't know if y'all can hear that but that's the turbo whistle I man it's it's a lot louder now especially you know of course it should be with the cold air intake but it's uh you can definitely hear it it's a lot more a lot more fun especially when you hit the gas and you hear the turbo spooling up but i want to give you all a quick update there's a start start to this video let's get this chicken coop built i uh, will see you in a second peace all right we're loaded up and leaving man that glare is terrible leaving the depot Got a ton of wood in the back of the truck. Holy mackerel. It's better be worth it, boys. That's what I'm telling you. But it should be a fun project. I'll keep you up to date on the, as we build it, I'm gonna have a build, how to build this chicken coop we're gonna be doing. Unfortunately, I will not be have plans, but I will post where you can get the plans that I got for this chicken coop. The gentleman that I watched the video on, he had a really nice chicken coop on. I really, Think it'll work well for what we have and uh so i decided to support a youtuber and kick him i think it was like 10 15 bucks for the plans really detailed plans and um yeah like i said it's really good i liked what he did seemed simple enough so my wife and i are going to take a stab at this and figure out see what we can do all right guys i am headed back to the house we are loaded up as soon as I get back home, I will get y'all set up on a tripod during the build process and try to continue filming this as much as I can. Didn't want to bore you guys with it being inside a Home Depot. Everybody knows that looks like, right? So, <clears throat> everything's loaded up. We're rolling out. Here is the haul. Time to take it from over here and build it back over there. Here we go, I'm just getting all of our material cut for one of the walls. I'm getting everything pretty much chopped up here in my shop and then I'm gonna bring it out there to the chicken coop and build it on the coop itself. A lot of fun for this project. My son's had a blast helping me out too and it was pretty awesome. You see that engine over there, actually, that's for the Toyota Tacoma right there. That's a 2TRFE engine and stay tuned for all of my people that enjoyed my diesel videos about the Banks Ram Air stuff, I will be posting a video on rebuilding that engine after this is all completed. Now that it's done, moving on to some other projects to kind of finalize some things up, and then we are moving on to building, rebuilding that engine. One thing to note with this project is I went by the material list that was provided on this particular design and I ended up having a lot more 2x4s than I needed. <clears throat> but with that being said, there are within this design, there are plans to build a chicken coop run and then there's a section strictly for the chicken coop. Since I did not need the material for the run, I only purchased the stuff for the chicken coop itself and it was just way too much. Uh, but that being said, I will say, I'm not sure how that gentleman did his material cuts, but 
I re whenever I got to certain lengths of material, I reuse as much as I possibly could instead of grabbing a brand new piece to try to limit the amount of just off cuts that I had. So here we are now, brought all material out here. My two sons are helping me out with this particular project. Every now and again, they provide some helpful assistance and other times they just get in the way, but either way, they had a blast. It was great having them out there. On the edge of these two by fours that are sticking up for the top of the wall, you can see they're cut at a 15 degree angle. Now, if you do decide to get these same plans that I did, you won't see that the plans do not specifically state where you need to place the 15 degree angle. That one kind of bit me in the butt a little bit. I cut the angles incorrectly and then I had to go back to the saw and then cut them back at the same or the correct angle. And the top plate, as you can see on the floor of the chicken coop right now, in my previous shot, you saw me ripping it down to have a 15 degree angle across the face of it. So that way it was in a nice flat transition across the top for the roof to sit on. So you decide to buy these plans, keep note of that, make sure you cut your angles correctly and you should be fine. As I mentioned before, you see me messing with the top plate and adding, I'm adding in shims to kind of get that particular board to be at the correct position. <clears throat> Instead of cutting new pieces, I just blocked it up and used some scrap wood to make it where it was nice and flat. So to kind of go back on this, you actually do not need to cut a, you can either do one of one or the other. You can cut a 15 degree angle across the two by fours going up for the studs or you can cut a 15 degree angle across the face of your top plate if i was to do this again i would just recommend cutting a 15 degree angle across the two by four studs and leaving the top plate alone that would be a much easier route and it makes it very nice and flat the plans did not specify this it just said you need to cut a 15 degree angle and then i found out later it was one or the other unfortunately we got it fixed and we moved on. I really messed up on this back portion and I was really frustrated and I started losing daylight really fast. The base here that was already here is whenever the video started, I built that behind my truck and then I moved this particular section over here and then began building the walls in place of where the chicken coop was going to be living forever. Now, <clears throat> somehow, you'll see later on, I ended up cutting the right post a little too high. I didn't cut that one correctly. And I was removing this, this section constantly because it was not working and it was frustrating the heck out of me I ended up finding out what the problem was and fixed it and finally moved on from this particular part of the build what i'm working on right now by the way is the nesting boxes and it was one of the most frustrating parts of this entire project as i progressed with trying to get this built out and move on I was getting everything lined up. I pre-cut all my material in the garage as I did with the walls and everything else. So I knew everything was right. I measured twice and double checked my measurements and everything was correct. And I just could not figure out why everything was not, nothing was lining up. And I finally, you'll see in a few, I pull it all apart, re-measure everything, double check everything. And then I find out that that right post is too long. Too long. And after I fixed that, it went together so smooth. But if you're doing this, just make sure you double check, remeasure, and measure again, because it can save you quite a headache.
as you can see here, I am losing daylight really quick. And the frustration is starting to settle in because you can kind of see that that right section is not touching the floor and I'm moving it out, trying to figure it out. And then finally double checking my measurements again. <laughs> and then finally decide to rip it all apart and go the long route and finally found out the problem. What are y'all doing? Might be down five gallons of paint by the time they're done, <laughs> but at least it'll be coated. <laughs> you gotta wipe it off. There you go. All right, now that we got the nesting box all sorted out and fixed up, I was able to move on to building the roof. Thankfully, my table is big enough to do this in my shop so I can cut all my material and just walk right there and put it together and carry it out. One thing to note, if you do decide to buy these plans, you will notice that there are two 2x4s two sistered together for the outside edges of the roof. I really didn't see the benefit of doing this so what I did was I just added the additional three inches to the center boards to make it to where I had only used one two by four and it worked just fine. In the plans, these braces are drawn in. There are two here and there are also some on the other end. However, there were none for the centers. So I went back and added one between either side of the center brace just for additional support. That was not in the plans. That was something I added on myself just to give it a little bit extra. If you do decide to do this, follow the plans exactly or, you know, wing it like I did on some of the stuff and make it work for you. Here I am adding in those center braces as mentioned. And what I did to make it easier for me to screw the screws into, where my line is marked, I just moved one of these to the left and on the opposing side I moved it to the right just so that I could easily screw the two ends that are next to each other as you're about to see and with no issues. As I'm putting this thing up here, this is where I mentioned the sistering of the two 2x4s two on the outer edges come into place. I mean, it's not necessary if you add the extra three inches, but what the person that designed this was trying to do was create an overhang on the left and right sides. And all you have to do is just offset, or I'm sorry, add an additional three inches to your center 2x4s. And it has plenty of overhang. And then the trim goes up and you it looks fantastic. So if you wanna save yourself two 2x4s, two just add three inches to your center braces. When you get the roof set up here, just make sure that the center two by fours are resting on the top plates of the walls, and that gives you plenty of area to anchor down with screws. All right, well, as you just saw, we got the roof put up. Now, you just gotta get the metal panels I'm actually going to be heading to pick that up here soon 
but here it is so far everyone check it out looking pretty good I'm trying to get as much as i can for you guys on this build process we got rained out yesterday with the roof put on now we're moving on to getting all of the trim pieces added in right here i'm just adding in filler pieces for the trim to sit nice and flush and then after that we're moving on with the rest of the trim after the trim went up it really kind of closed in and make it look really nice i was really happy with the trim pieces going on it really added that extra completion to it here i am covering up my wonderful backside trying to keep you guys from seeing that lovely sight so happens a couple more times but i do my best to keep it covered for y'all to fasten these filler pieces and the trim, I'm only using my 18 gauge brad nailer. I have a compressor in my garage. You can see my hose ran across the yard here. Made it really fast, really simple. Made it easy to throw up. Just shoot the finishing nails in there and move on to the next piece. I noticed my trim piece was not sitting flush here, so I got my level out, grabbed my oscillating tool, and shaved off some parts of this siding just so I could get the trim to sit nice and flush against that part. Here we go again with another wonderful view. To put these two pieces on, I went to my miter saw and cut each side at 45 degrees so that way they went together and they butted up really nice.
If you're looking to build this project, you do not have to have all the tools that I have. I have accumulated on most of my tools over several years and of course it makes it a lot easier to build products like this, but it is not necessary to have half the stuff that I have out here. Um, you can use something besides a brad nailer, you can use screws, you can use a hammer, whatever you see fit. It's This is a very easy project overall, but the tools that I have on hand, like my oscillating tool, my brad nailer, my miter saw, and things of that nature, plus my pat battery power circular saw, it just very comforting and very easy to have these things but you do not have to have them so if you're looking to do this and you don't have all these tools don't get discouraged you can do it without them it may take you a little bit longer but it is 150 percent possible and i encourage you to take on this challenge If you're putting in windows, make sure you cut the holes out before you put the trim pieces up. I did this after the fact, and where I punched out my pilot hole for my flush trim bit to go through for my router, I used I put it too low, and that bottom trim piece was in the way for me to be able to use my router effectively on the bottom portion of the cut. I had to use another method, and it was not as pretty as the flush trim bit, but luckily three sides out of the four for each window were nice and pretty and the bottom was a little ugly. So you can avoid this. Just do your window cuts before you put the trim up. Well guys, this is how far we got yesterday. It got kind of dark on me. This is, we just lose sunlight so fast, but I got the doors done, added on, got the latches put on. Put some shingles up here on top of this T111, just because, I don't know, it just seemed a little bit more protected. So the paint, so there's the latch. Here's well, <laughs> one of my kids' dinosaurs. But here's the inside of the nesting box. Closes up nice. It actually stays closed over here. Latch it up. There's another walkthrough of this too whenever I actually have it set up on a tripod at the end after we get it painted. There's that. This latch here is what I had laying around my garage. Let's undo this. Pull the doors open. And there it is. Now, finally, got all the wood cutting done. All of this part is finished. Now it's time for us to go get some paint. And going to pick up the metal to finish the roof.
I used my clamp to help me push down the edges of this metal roofing to kind of curl it around my roof. And it worked really well. It created a nice little cap on each side. And uh, if you have a clamp when you're doing this part, I highly recommend it. It helps you squish it down really nice because doing it by hand is pretty tough. Now we're moving on to building the second roof. This is gonna be what overhangs chicken coop door. Since I don't have the run, I didn't want that part to be uncovered. With the run, if you build that part, it's all covered up, but we didn't have that. So here we are adding in a little bit extra just to keep the chickens nice and dry and keep water from going inside the coop at their chicken coop door. I maintain the same degrees at 15 degrees for the roof slope, just so it matches the top. Turned out really nice. If I did it again, I would probably change it to 10 degrees to give it a little bit less of a steep pitch, but it still looks pretty good. And you'll see that in a moment. I will also have plans for this part of the roof as this was not part of the original build process. As I mentioned before, the original had the chicken coop run built onto the front and that's what covered the overall entrance where the chickens would go in and out of the coop. But since I wasn't doing that, I kind of made this on the fly and I will also, like I said, post plans for this particular roof design if you'd like to do it, do it this way as well. I fastened this roof about two inches below the trim piece at the top of that wall. And I just used some two inch screws and I sunk them into the studs that were on the back side. And I kind of used the existing screws that I put in to hold the panels up as my guide to find those stud positions. And the sheet metal that I see, you see on the ground over here, those are the off cuts for the actual roof itself. So whenever you're buying your 10 for the roof just get an additional i think this is 24 inches but like i said i'll post the plans down below whatever you're buying just get two panels in excess of whatever the distance is for this particular roof setup if you decide to go this route This tool is really neat. It's an attachment for the drill to cut sheet metal. I have no idea where I got this thing from, but it has been a really cool tool to have on hand. And if you would like to get one for yourself, I'll post a link or a description of what it is where you can go find one to add to your arsenal. And it just cuts like paper. It's really, really easy. It makes really nice cuts, quick to use.
all right guys we got everything done it's maybe a quick rundown and walk through of everything i just did the final touches today and here we are got our chickens in so that's what we're looking at we got we put this gate in right here to be able to come in and out we added a fence from there to there and then i fenced around the bottom of that i'll show you that in just a moment got the coupe all painted and everything looks great i didn't get this on camera but whenever i built this it was really simple i have plans for this this is my own creation here and i will have the plans posted down below with a link to a google folder google drive folder for you to be able to pull a pdf of this up and get your measurements and make it however you want and uh, it was pretty simple really easy it looks really good now our first day of having the chickens I noticed so I don't have the run part on this whole coop well now they were going up in here to go in for the night two of them hopped over and I just had to put the screen up to keep them from jumping over at that section we bought this metal can this has our chicken scratch and food in got it at Home Depot 35 bucks It'll keep them keep everything nice and dry yeah here's the coop my wife got some pretty little lights to put on here make it look festive or what have you and as you men know whatever the wife wants the wife gets so happy wife happy life and yeah so here's the bottom of this here I have I had some fine mesh chicken wire cover the bottom up and then we ran a piece of fence from the corner here to the to the fence there and attach it to our current fence that's here Here's the back side here. But yeah, everything's looking good. So currently this fence that's rolled back here, this is our garden area, kind of a mess. But right now we have it open for them to go through here and just kind of scratch around because we're not currently in the garden at the moment. But yeah, after we get that garden done, we'll fence that back up, put the windows in. And looking really good so far we've gotten a few eggs it's been really nice but yeah here it is guys thanks for watching hope this helps as i mentioned before i will post a link in the description down below where you can find the plans for this and then i'll put the link on where you can go to get the plans for this from the gentleman that initially created it have a great day thanks for watching